Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Catherine Kuchenbecker. It's really my pleasure to uh, speak today. I actually didn't have a choice because, as you heard in the morning, we have four pillars, and I'm the only one uh, so far yet in the robot learning pillar, but there are connections between all of them. And yeah, it's really a pleasure to be here today, also to represent uh, my institute. I thought you might like to know, although my name sounds German, I'm actually American. I grew up in Southern California. And how did I wind up here? I, I'm actually also trained as a mechanical engineer. I went to Stanford University. I did a PhD with a German man. I was his first PhD student, Gunther Niemeyer. He had worked at Intuitive Surgical, working on surgical robots. And then I did a short postdoc at Johns Hopkins on the East Coast. I just keep moving east. I, I worked with Alison Okamura, who's now at Stanford. Uh, and then I, did a, uh, I worked at Penn as a university professor there for nine and a half years. I was part of the GRASP lab, which is this interdisciplinary research lab. I also really like the Stuttgart of interdisciplinary research. I think that's where I started working across disciplines beyond mechanical engineering, also with computer scientists, electrical engineers, perception scientists, biomedical engineers. And then in um, January of 2017, I started as a director at the Stuttgart site of the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. We have two sites, uh, Tübingen and Stuttgart. We also have an LS unit in Tübingen, um, and I hope we will in the future have connections from our Stuttgart, uh, Stuttgart LS unit to the Tübingen LS unit. And there are many initiatives between the two. Our institute was founded in 2011. And uh, I wanted to show you geographically, it's actually very, very close <laughs> to where we are now. So we're at that red dot in Pfaffenwaldring 47. And if you just look over on the left-hand side of this screenshot, that is where our institute is. That's where my office is. I work in, it's in Bus now. It's like a couple kilometer walk. It's actually a very nice bike ride or walk, or you, you can take the bus to the Max Planck Institute to, bus stop. So I hope that those of you who are uh, here at the University of Stuttgart will also eventually take the chance to come over and visit us at the Stuttgart site at the MPI for Intelligent Systems. And we will build many collaborations and cooperations. This is actually the reason our institute's second site was placed here was to have the close connection with the University of Stuttgart. And I'm really enjoying that already um, with the members of the LS unit and, and the other professors and group leaders and students I'm getting to know. So, um, furthermore, I think it's also important that you know, uh, if we zoom in on our institute, uh, maybe I'll use the mouse so you can see it on both screens. Nope. Oh, yeah, there. Do you notice, what's this? We demolished some old buildings that we didn't need anymore, and we're going to build a new building. And it's called, uh, it's going to be the Stuttgart Cyber Valley Building, and it will actually be, I hope, beautiful. They're working on the final designs, and it will have dedicated space, uh, not only for our institute, for group leaders from the MPI, but also for the University of Stuttgart and a big shared high bay, collaborative space, and dedicated space for startups. So this is actually a huge investment from the land of Baden-Württemberg in our region here in, in the Stuttgart region. And this building isn't ready yet. Um, they're just and still finalizing the designs, but maybe in 2026, those of you who are here, um, maybe you'll even have a chance to further come on over to our campus and we can have shared experiments and even much easier collaborations than we have right now. Um, so have that in your mind. Cool Cyber Valley building coming in the future. And then I should tell you a little bit more. Of course, the people are even more important than the place and the building. And so this is uh, the, the, the PIs, the principal investigators in my institute. Across the top, you see the six directors that we have now, myself. Um, and actually, here in Stuttgart, on the right are the Stuttgart researchers. Uh, Metin City was the first uh, director here in the new direction of Sh in Stuttgart. He does like micro um, and small robots, especially for biomedical applications. He has a huge team. Um, he's building a medical lab where they'll be able to put little robots in uh, rodents and test them. Christoph Keplinger is our newest director in Stuttgart. He does uh, soft materials and actuators, uh, really, really cool, like artificial muscle actuators. And then uh, you might have heard of Bernhard Schulkopf or Moritz Hart or Michael Black, which are the three directors in the tubing site of our institute. And then we have a wonderful array of group leaders. And we're all part of, as I already mentioned, Cyber Valley. This is our tubing building, which is more computationally focused. Our sugar building, the one we are looking at overhead, um, is more physically focused, and we're all part of IMPRS IS. Many people here are also. This is this uh, PhD program that I'm the speaker for. Um, it's across all three of the institutions, University of Stuttgart, University of Tübingen, and both sites of our institute. Um, and hopefully you will have connections uh, to some of them. I actually invited all of IMPRS to join today, and I was happy to see uh, many IMPRS students here today. 
So now I have one more administrative or big picture thing before I talk about research. I promise I'm going to talk about research. I promise. Uh, but I wanted to take the chance. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, we are hiring uh, PhD students and group leaders. We're going to hire a lot of group leaders. We have an open director position. So if you know people who are looking for jobs and you want to bring them here to our region, uh, put them in touch with me because uh, we're going to hire a lot of more group leaders and that's even better for this wonderful ecosystem that we're building. So uh, last announcement is that tomorrow, my institute is hosting a Max Planck lecture by Professor Jenin Bao, who's an absolutely amazing researcher from Stanford who does wearable electronics, and then three um, talks. You're all invited. It's a public, uh, even if you don't re didn't register, it's totally fine. It starts at 1.30 in the afternoon tomorrow in uh, 2D5, which is our big lecture hall in Heisenberg Strasse 1. It's also live streamed. Uh, in addition to Jenin's talk, uh, I think Wieland Brendel might be interesting to you. He does a robust computer vision. He used to be a group leader in Matthias Bethke's group in the University of Tübingen. He's a new W2 group leader in my institute in the Tübingen site. He just started. Um, or Betty Moeller, she works for Amazon. She does uh, virtual human bodies. Uh, Sian Mukherjee uh, is at the University of Leibniz, um, more theoretical. And then we have a, a garden party afterwards. So if today's celebration isn't enough for you, please come tomorrow or tune in. Uh, you can watch any of the talks. They're all live streamed to our website. All right, is anyone going to come? At least a couple of you. Cool. My team members. <laughs> Great. Okay. Now we turn uh, focus onto my team, or what we call my department at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. Uh, I think the lifeblood is really my PhD students. I also have central staff, um, postdocs, and postdocs who became um, independent scientists like Hyosung that you just heard from. Uh, I wanted to ask if any members of my team are here, would you just stand up or wave, draw attention to yourself? Oh, they're all in the back row. Cool, and I didn't mark all of them, but I put stars on some of them. You already heard from Ravali in the morning postdoc session, and then you just heard from Hyosung, who's still part-time postdoc in my team. And then we have a lot of posters. Those are the purple stars, and then a couple other people who are just attending to check it out interns. And I will also just mention, we really like uh, visiting PhD students and interns. So if you're, and beyond me, also other people in my institute, uh, these are great ways to have scientific exchange. So just uh, write to us and let us know. And people would be, I think, very open uh, to getting to know you guys and to building new collaborations. OK, now we're on to the research. OK. So across all the work that we pursue in my department, there's a unifying motivation. And that is about the sense of touch. Your sense of touch is really probably much more important than you realize. It's your first sense to develop. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to live without. If, if it's damaged, it's very, very difficult to control your body because your sense of touch is the feedback system for your motor control systems. So your sensory and motor systems are very tightly entwined. And it's also deeply um, engaged in social interaction with other people. And it's spread throughout your body, all these little receptors everywhere, not just localized in your eyes or your ears like sight or hearing. And so a lot of the work that we do is inspired by our understanding of the sense of touch, which is much less developed than what we understand about sight and hearing. And as Ravali already hinted, um, uh, the haptic, uh, I would break all haptic input coming in or haptic display to a user into more the tactile cues, the things felt in your skin, uh, which are things distributed all over pressure. These are the same kinds of things that Kyosang was talking about trying to measure for a robot to give it a sense of touch. And um, your receptor density varies spatially, so your fingertips are very, very uh, good at perceiving sensations. Also, uh, things over time, they're very high bandwidth, up to 1,000 hertz. So 1,000 oscillations in a second, so it's pro approaching, getting into frequencies you can also hear. Um, and then there's the broad uh, contact or temperature, all sorts of other things. And then this is blended with what you feel deeper in your body. So you're th through the configuration of your muscles and the forces in your tendons, you can put all this information together to understand how your body is interacting with the world, if you're having the effect that you wanted, um, and how to modify what you're doing to have the effect that you want. And robots often have more kinesthetic sensors, and we're working a lot to give them uh, better tactile cues. And that's mainly what I'm going to talk about today. Now, now that I've told you 
and Ravli and Hyosung also told you how important your sense of touch is, you might be surprised to find out that a lot of engineered systems that are on the market today or even in research hardly speak to your sense of touch. They certainly present beautiful visual imagery and sounds, those are obviously important, but they almost do nothing for your sense of touch. They can feel where you touch, so, and that's usually only binary and contact location, but when I touch this picture of my cat or a picture of a dress I'm thinking of buying online, I cannot feel the materials. Uh, we don't have technology for digitizing how things feel and sharing that, and that would be really useful. Uh, also in virtual reality, not just screen-based interfaces, but 3D, not having a contact sensation when you reach out. We can do hand tracking, we can do beautiful uh, head-mounted displays, but you reach out to touch the virtual water bottle and your hand just goes right through it and it's, it's missing. There's a big component that's missing. Also in medical training or 3D design. Um, I do work a lot in robotic surgery, um, and here an operator is controlling remotely little instruments that reach down inside of the patient, and they normally can only see.